Welcome to part 14 of this video series. Today we're going to be discussing cooling and ventilation for your small liveaboard boat. And thank you for supporting the creation of this video series. If you haven't done so already, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you don't miss any future videos in this series. Okay, so unless you spend your summers north of the Arctic Circle, chances are you'll still need some form of cooling. And if you do live north of the Arctic Circle, you still need some form of ventilation even if it's just opening a window to let a breeze through. Where I live here in Canada, it could still easily get up to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer, and that's not including humidity. I'm going to start with cooling. Most small liveaboard boats don't have the electrical capacity to run an air conditioner on their own, unless they're tied up at a marina and have shore power. Yes, you could run one off a generator, but that would not only be annoying to you, but to your fellow boaters. If you do, then in most cases, the type of air conditioner you install depends mostly on what type of boat you have. For example, most houseboats usually use a standard home window mounted unit, even though these aren't really designed for this environment. I have seen other type of boats use these too. Installing one in a cabin cruiser or trawler is much simpler than in a sailboat. Although, having said that, I've seen them mounted on sailboats, blow the hatchboards, I even saw one mounted in a quarter berth that vented into the cockpit. Be aware though, that these types of air conditioners are not designed for these harsh environments. Most of the mechanical components are okay, but the cases, etc. are just tin and will rust very quickly. There are two other types of portable air conditioners you can use on a boat. The first being the hatch top type. These can be a bit expensive and you need a place to store them when not in use. The idea is you set it on the deck next to the hatch and a small tent goes around the hatch, sealing it off. This is actually a good setup since cold air goes down and it's placed at the top of your boat. The next type is fairly new onto the market, and from what I understand, they're mainly designed for tents, etc. But I'm now starting to hear people using them aboard boats, and that's the Camp Portable Air Conditioner. I personally haven't used one, but I've been doing my research on them, and they do seem well designed for use on a small boat. And I do say small because they don't provide as many BTUs as a regular air conditioner, but they seem to provide enough for a small boat. They just need one large vent hose that needs to be run outside. They cool using a type of compressor similar to that of bigger air conditioners. There are even some that run off rechargeable batteries. These do seem to be the most expensive of all the portable air conditioners, but they might really be worth it. The next type of air conditioner you can get is the built-in type. These come in many different styles, but what they all have in common are they're not cheap and they take up a lot of space, but they are the most efficient by far. I rarely see these on small level board boats just for those reasons alone, so I won't get into them too much today. There are less expensive types of air conditioners on the market. There are the cheapest ones that require you to add ice or freeze an ice pack, but these hardly seem practical on a boat where refilling the ice multiple times a day would be challenging, if not impossible. The other type of cheaper air conditioners are the ones that rely on evaporation. These are sometimes called swamp coolers. I have no idea why. The concept behind them is very simple. Like when a breeze blows across wet skin, it cools you. These need water to run, which isn't a problem since you live on the water, but what they need most to work is hot, dry air, something you rarely ever get living on the water. These are much better suited to people who live in the desert, not on the ocean. Okay, so speaking of a breeze blowing across your skin, a nice breeze through the inside of your boat can be the simplest method of staying cool. There are many techniques to accomplish this. Most simple are the passive methods that can be an open port or hatch to the more elaborate methods like cowl vents, or you can set up a large fabric wind scoop. These can either be hung from a jib halyard on a sailboat, or rigging up some sort of stand on a powerboat. This is one place that being out at an anchorage is better than being in a marina or yacht club. Not only is there more breeze further from shore, but because your boat swings to face into the wind, you can have things like wind scoops or cowl vents always pointing in the right direction. I know of many times when it was hot, going out and anchoring away from shore just to get more of a breeze. Now remember, if you do use cowl vents, then try to have a Dorad box mounted underneath it. This allows air to still enter your boat even when it's raining. I've had plenty of times when it was still warm outside during a rainfall and having to close everything up tight, and it made the air inside absolutely stifling. Your goal should always be when you're trying to create a passive airflow is to have the air enter through the front of the boat and exit through the rear of the cabin. Once when I was young, I was building a lean-to and my father told me wind cannot enter where it cannot leave. 
Ever since then, I knew to always have a point of entry for the wind and a point of exit. So if you have a front hatch open and your rear one is closed, chances are you won't get much of a breeze at all. One more method I have heard of people doing is using a wet sheet or fabric and putting it over the hatches. As the moisture evaporates, it cools the fabric and then the breeze blows through it, cooling the cabin. My problem with this is it adds a lot of moisture to the cabin, something I personally try to avoid as much as I can. Moisture makes it sticky inside and easier for things like mold and mildew to grow. Fans are the most common active way to create a breeze inside your cabin, but the problem with fans are they cool you, not the room. They work by blowing across your skin and evaporating the moisture, sweat. They can help circulate air around the room if there's already a passive airflow like open ports and hatches, but they do not cool the room on their own. And please, if you have a fur-bearing pet, don't leave them locked in a cabin with just a fan. As they don't sweat, a fan does extremely little to cool them. You can use fans to either push more fresh air into a room or to cool you directly. The simplest way I know to add fresh air into the room itself, without too much hassle that is, is with using solar vents. These are a very simple concept. They use a small solar panel to run the fan that then pushes air through a vent into your cabin. Some better ones even come with a battery built in so they can run at night as well. The only warning I can give about these is the cheaper ones have cheap batteries that don't last very long and the casing can be really cheap plastic too. It breaks super easily, especially if you accidentally step on it. You do get what you pay for. The next way to help cool the inside is to cool the outside. Obviously a light colored deck and hull is cooler than a dark colored one, but keeping the sun off the deck as much as possible using awnings etc help cool a lot as well. Another way to keep a boat cool on the inside is to keep the heat out by the use of insulation. If it's possible for you, then it's always worthwhile to insulate your boat. Not only does this help keep the boat cool, but it helps prevent condensation. Condensation happens mainly when there is a difference of temperature on the inside than on the outside. This is always worst on the shoulder seasons, when you have hot days and cold nights. I personally hate going to bed in damp blankets, etc., because there's too much moisture in the air. You can use just about any type of insulation, but try to avoid some natural insulations that easily grow mold and mildew. I should also mention that any enclosed spaces inside the boats, like under benches, etc., should be vented as well to keep the moisture from building up there. In closing, whatever method you use or combination of methods, there's lots of options from very cheap to very expensive. All you can do is try different things and figure out what works best for you. If you have any ideas that I have not covered in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing and discussing them with you. And thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video series on living aboard a small boat. If you have, then please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Also, I included links to all the past videos in the description below.